Three-way light switches can be a little confusing to most DIYers and are classically found on setups such as this. You have a staircase, you have one three-way switch at the bottom, one three-way switch at the top, and a light fixture somewhere in the hallway or staircase. I'm gonna to touch on three main things. First up, we'll just talk terminology. Why does a circuit that has two light switches, why is it called three-way? Doesn't make sense. Next up, I'll actually draw out a schematic, the most common setup, the most common wiring that you'll see in the three-way light switch, like the one we have here. And then lastly, we'll dive a little bit deeper on the traveler wires. There's two wires called travelers that go between the two three-way switches. They're critical for correct functionality and will give you a better understanding of how they work so you'll know how to wire that up correctly the first time or to troubleshoot if something is going wrong. So for terminology, we have our standard light switch here and then a three-way light switch. You'll have two of these within your circuit, and the three-way can be traced back to old circuits where they'd call out three points on the light switch. And it seems like over time, those points just got adopted to three-way. So if you exclude your ground terminal, the three-way just indicates the number of terminals you'll expect on that light switch. And as such, if you get a four-way light switch, you guessed it, you're gonna have four terminals on that light switch. So now let's take a look at the most common three-way lighting circuit. And we'll do that by drawing out the schematic, which will give us an overarching view of the circuit. So a few call outs here that might be confusing. The most confusing is blue actually would indicate a white wire, which is neutral. Green is ground, that's a little bit more self-explanatory, even though it'd be a bare copper wire. And then black and red are true to what you should see if you're using standard Romex, like a 12.2 Romex here and a 12.3 Romex. The two indicates two conductors, not number of wires. The bare copper is not included. So two conductors, that's why it is a 12 gauge two. And then the same for 12, three, 12 gauge three conductors. Again, not including bare copper. This would be for a 20 amp circuit. You could replace 14.2 and 14.3 if you're working with a 15 amp circuit. So we'll start off here on the line side. We'd have a 12.2. Right, so we'd have a 12-2 wire coming in. We would be passing our neutral through and also passing our ground through, but taking a pigtail out to our switch. So we'd be pigtailing to ground the switch itself. Then for the switch, we would have the black common terminal. And here, although I drew the terminals as black, these would actually be the gold terminals. So from our 12 to we'd provide the hot side, the black hot side to the black common terminal. And then we'd have 12, three. So we'd have 12, three running between the two switches. Again, we pass the neutral blue representing a white neutral wire. We passed ground as well. And then we take the red hot conductor and the black hot conductor, and we connect those up to these two terminals here. And these are our traveler wires. These are what are going to connect the two light switches up and make sure that you can control your load or control your light by either flipping your light switch two or light switch one. That is what's gonna be critical to correct operation. So that 12-3 is passing those wires through, and then we take that white neutral, represented by blue here, and we're just gonna pass that into our final leg of the circuit. Again, ground is gonna pass the ground through, but it's also gonna pigtail and connect up to ground that light switch. 
One other note is make sure if you have a metal junction box that that junction box should also have a method for grounding. So there is a possibility that you might be pulling another ground off here depending on what kind of boxes you're using. Then in the same faction, the travelers are connecting up. So in this case, I would have red coming in here. And then on the other one, I would also pass red into the same side as the black common. Now that is not critical. It should work if you took red to this side, but I just like to be consistent. And as such, I took the black to my top traveler terminal. And then from the last set of wiring, we would have 12 two, that would be our load and that's going to our light fixture. So you would have the hot, that's going to provide hot to the light going into your common. So that's gonna be going into your common. So that should make sense here. We're gonna provide power, the hot into this common. We have some things going on in the middle, which we'll dive deeper into. And then on our second light switch, we're gonna be pulling the hot going to our load or our light from the black common as well. And then you'll have your neutral going to your fixture. And then depending on what kind of fixture you have, you might be able to ground that fixture or you might just be grounding the actual box that the fixture is mounted to. So that's the overall circuit. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. So the last part is gonna be a better understanding of the travelers themselves. And how I'm gonna do that is I have a little demo here that basically gives us the full functionality of a three-way lighting circuit by, but overall simplifying it. So I'm gonna grab my multimeter and then we'll show how either one of these switches can complete the circuit and turn on or off the light. So with the lighting circuit, if we had a simple single pull light switch, it either opens or closes the hot side of your circuit. So at open, it would not provide any power. The light would be off. If it is closed, then it connects the two hots up and it completes the overall circuit. A three-way lighting circuit is much more complex, but ultimately your line coming in and your load coming out, you can kind of think of it as line coming in and load coming out. So all of this in the middle is just resulting in either opening or closing your hot side. But because you have two switches, it's much more complex and thus you need the travelers. Your travelers here are represented by the red wire, like we talked about before, going into the gold terminal and black wire going into the opposite gold terminal and a 12-3 piece of non pentel and a 12-3 piece of Romex traveling between the two switches. We have 12-2 going in and 12-2 going out. I have simplified this by taking the ground and neutral basically out of the circuit and we're only looking at the hot side. The way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna use my multimeter and we're gonna check for continuity. We're gonna check when there is a path and it is closed or when we do not have a path through the lighting circuit and it is open, which will give us a good understanding of the relationship between these two switches. So how we'll do that is when the multimeter now set to the continuity setting or set to resistance with an audible alarm, when it picks up resistance or a completed circuit, it will give you an audible alarm and that would represent when your light is turned on. So we don't need power to actually test out this demo circuit. So if I flip this switch, switch number one, down. So now I have completed the circuit. If I switch, flip it up, that turns it off. So I did the on and off at the same light switch, but because it's a three-way, and most commonly, let's say light switch one is at the top of the stairwell, light switch two is at the bottom, I might want to turn it on, walk down the steps, and then turn it off. Okay, 
So the travelers are critical to creating the relationship between the two different switches where either one can turn the light on or off. On, off, or on, off. So we'll just dive a little bit deeper and how, how I'll do that is I'll take this alligator clip off and we'll, we'll test each of the points. So right now I have continuity through this light switch to this screw terminal. I do not have continuity all the way to my light. So if I follow the black through, right, we still have continuity, but then I go to the black terminal, which would provide a connection to my light. I do not, I do not have continuity. Now, if I test right there and I flip the switch, now I have a connection through and I'd have a connection all the way through to my light switch. So really these switches are just flipping between connecting this black terminal to this gold terminal, or if you flip it the other way, it connects it to this gold terminal. So the travelers are critical to give you that connection between the two different light switches and the functionality where you're only using one light switch to turn on and off, or you turn it on at one light switch and off at the other. That's what the travelers are used for, and that's why they're critical to the correct functionality of a three-way light switch. So hopefully that gives you a foundation of how three-way light circuits work, or maybe just a refresher. If you get all the way to the end, you get it wired up, and it's not working expected, jump back to the wiring schematic, just cross-reference that you have everything wired up correctly. But do remember, I just showed you one type of configuration for a three-way light switch. There are others. My best reference for different wiring schematics has been a book by Black & Deckard called The Complete Guide to Wiring, and they just updated to the latest code in the latest version, February 2022. Look down in the description and you'll see a link to our Amazon store and we have it listed with all of our other tools and supplies. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. Now, if you've always struggled with getting solid copper and stranded copper together in a wire net, check out this video right here. It's a super popular video that helps you do it right with a wire nut or with a Wago lever nut, which is what I prefer. So thanks for joining us on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.